you will face many options. At your most confusing times, when the storms roll in, you will face many options, but you face one choice. Will you live up or will you live down to expectations? And let me be clear, the bar is high. We want the uplifting message. We want the inspiring story. You know, school's always been a river and work's always been the sea. You can sit in your desk and look at that clock for the next 40 years, hoping for those second hands to turn by a little bit faster. And I'd rather not. Courage is sitting on a bus and refusing to move. It's everything you want strength to be. Courage is daring to be different when there's all the pressure in the world to look or sound a certain way. The willingness to face forward when there's no one else around. Once you know those few things in life that matter more than the goals, more than the dream, it's then that the destination has the impact you desire. What did Churchill do when the storm was raging all around him? He kept his head up. And here's what you do. You keep your head up. And being ready for what that takes. It's the light that finally breaks after the darkest of nights. You go back to those values, those things you will not give up on. At the deepest level, who are you? What if today became the day? Now became the moment. Now became the time you made that personal change. Now became the time you improved that drifting relationship. Now became the time you brought the life back into balance. In a few hundred years, when the history of our time will be written from a long-term perspective, it's likely the most important event historians will see is not technology, not the internet, not e-commerce. It's an unprecedented change in the human condition. Start by controlling what you can control, nothing else. Hang on to your hat. Hang on to your hope. And wind the clock, for tomorrow is another day. You know when there's nothing left to do but to fight? with everything you've got to get back up. There's a word for it. Resilience. And that word comes down to such a simple test. Not much involved, but in the moments that matter most, it's everything. You and a mirror looking into your own eyes and realizing there's nowhere else to go but up and being ready for what that takes. It's a single decision. The same decision you'll need to make every day. Get up. Get up. Get up. It's what brings people back when an injury makes it look to everyone else that all is lost. But it's not. It's what gets someone to write letter after letter after letter, looking for a job because they know all they need is a start. It's what causes someone to keep moving straight forward even when the start of their journey should have knocked them off track. You and Amir, same decision every day. Because the thing is that comebacks mean the damage is already done. Comebacks only happen after things get hard. It happened, and only you know how dark it gets. Resilience and grit, these aren't pretty words. They mean something much more to those who know them well. These words have scars. They symbolize the battle. But they are also the gateway to something so special. It's what it means to lose eight elections, be in bed for six months after a nervous breakdown, then to get up and do what it takes to enter the books of history. It's the power behind getting rejected 12 times before smashing almost every record and every ceiling imaginable. Resilience, that's the word left when the storms keep coming. When things go from bad to worse, every reason to stop trying. The moment we all get humbled by at some point, sometimes more than once. There are times for dreams. And sometimes there is only time for the reality of now. 
picking up one foot, then the other, starting to move forward step by step, tears and frustration, another step, hurt and sadness, another step, shaking off what was you just keep going. It's the light that finally breaks after the darkest of nights. In the moment that matters, you and the mirror, same decision every day, knowing it's gonna be long, knowing there is no other way. That is resilience. I wish for a few things, but one of them is to never turn back early. When the direction's right, when things matter most, to not stop just because it got hard. That is the goal, to simply work hard. For a long time I didn't understand this lesson. Easier was the pursuit, easier was the path forward things are hard, find the shortcut. It sounds rational. If there's an easier way, do it. If a shortcut exists, take it. Because the shortcut works. And there's a cleverness in finding it. It works in most ways, but one. The shortcut never teaches you how to work hard. And at some point, that is what it will come down to. The ability to work hard. I'm not sure I've seen great things happen any other way. I don't think we've found that shortcut yet. In 1953, how did Norgay and Hillary reach the summit of Everest? I get the talent. I also get the sheer hard work. Step after step after step. Lungs screaming, legs burning, eyes blinding, until one moment found no other way brought it all into perspective. No question, Jack Ma is brilliant. But what if he'd stopped after not getting into university with his first three entrance exams? Or lost his drive after applying for 30 jobs and being turned down from all of them? KFC come to China, come to my seat. 20, 24 people went for the job. 23 people accepted. I was the only one guy. I love this poem by Annie Johnson Flint. Have you come to the Red Sea place in your life? For in spite of all you can do, there is no way out, there is no way back, there is no other way but through. You see, the shortcut never teaches you that way through. This message sounds motivational, if that's what you hear, hear it. But also, hear the depth, hear the difference. This is not about working yourself into a frenzy. This is not about moving forward at all costs. This is not about waking up early, going to bed late, being so single-minded you miss the world around you. This is not madness. That may be some people's version of hard work, not mine. I'm interested in precise hard work, focused hard work, hard work that builds a great life instead of tearing it apart. I'm no longer enamored by success at the expense of life. I've known the shortcut. Sometimes it's still my choice. But when the challenging lesson is what I seek, for those things that matter most, because I know what's in my dreams. So I choose to work hard.
Right now, as you're watching this, millions of people are creating goals for their future. Work out more often, earn more money, stop procrastinating. This drive to be better is part of being who we are. Self-improvement is not just possible, it's powerful. Yet studies tell us only 8% of people will actually reach their goals, 8%. So we have these dreams, but for most people, they simply remain as dreams. So how can you be part of the 8%? Margaret Mead puts it perfectly. What people say, what people do, and what they say they do are entirely different things. Most people can't make it happen. Change gets stuck between intention and action. So what's needed is a new perspective. I love this quote by Maya Angelou. If you don't like something, change it. And if you can't change it, change your attitude. She puts personal change so clearly, makes it so accessible. If it's easy to make a change in your life, then do it. But if you can't make the change, if it's harder than simply making the decision, if you've tried to reach this goal before and failed, perhaps what's needed is a change of attitude, a change of mindset. You see, this is the hard part about change. If it's easy, we just do it. But if it's hard, that's where we fall short. So our goals are never the easy things. We've already done those. Our goals focus on what's hard. Then how do you conquer what you haven't been able to conquer before? Science and wisdom tell us that answer is in the mirror. Francis of Assisi said, start by doing what's necessary, then do what's possible. And suddenly you're doing the impossible. The world is full of incredible change, hard change. Mark Wahlberg struggled early. Drew Barrymore overcame a drug addiction. James Dyson was a failing entrepreneur. Tim Allen spent 28 months in jail. I always wanted to be one of the guys. I was the first one to start the fight. I was the youngest of nine. I actually became one of the guys that I looked up to. I didn't like what I had become. I thought that, you know what? I have to, I have to change and I have to change immediately. We see their success today. It's easy to think about the external rewards, but the important path was inside. Goals stay hard when they stay outside of you. You focus on the results you seek, but forget where true change actually occurs. When change stays external, the outcomes you're looking for often seem far away. But when they become internalized, then the change you're looking for is already starting. So appreciate the progress. Place your attention on the daily transformation happening within you. Martin Luther King Jr. reminds us, if I cannot do great things, I can do small things in a great way. Maybe that's exactly why he was able to do both. Confucius wrote, it does not matter how slowly you go as long as you do not stop. Don't stop. The change you're looking for is inside. What everyone else can see will come later. 8% reach their goals. Be in that group. Deeper answers are your path forward. 8% reach their goals. Be in that group. One of the biggest mistakes people make when they get up each day is that they open their eyes, but they never truly focus them. They don't ever take their list of 10 things and focus it to the one thing that matters most. There are times for complicated answers. There are also times for very simple ones. So maybe this is a moment, one of those times in life to focus and finish. Maybe today is the day to take back control. Maybe today is the day to focus on the one thing. And now, what if you got rid of maybe? What if today became the day? Now became the moment. Now became the time you made that personal change. 
Now became the time you proved that drifting relationship. Now became the time you brought life back into balance. We have 86,400 seconds in a day. It only takes one to make the choice. One to make all the rest matter differently. To go from where you are today to where you see yourself tomorrow. What changes? What becomes the difference? It all comes down to the same choice made over and over again. Do what you know you should do. When you get up in the morning, two paths emerge. Be aware of both. One where you keep going through the motions. The other where you take each step with purpose. And that split path A or B changes your world. So I get that you're busy. We're all busy. What I'm curious about is if you're focused. What's the thing that matters most? Once you see it, everything else fades away. When you wake up and both paths emerge, start by controlling what you can control, nothing else. Drown out the rest. Remove the noise. Remove the nonsense. Narrow down the list to the one thing. Simply doing that begins to show you the way. Your necessity will find a way. Focus and finish. Wake up. Open your eyes. Focus them. Go to bed satisfied. Focus and finish. Imagine this for a moment. Imagine walking down a path that is completely covered by fog. You strain to make out what's in front of you, but you're only catching glimpses. You're doing all you can to see your next steps, but you're literally walking into a fog. Then you turn around and everything behind you is totally clear. In front of you, almost nothing. Behind you, you can see every step from every path that is added up to get you exactly where you are right now. Now that picture you just imagined, that picture is an image of life. In many ways, we know what I've described to be true. It's hard to see forward, yet all the questions we face come at us from that direction. What to do for work? What to do with school? How to make the big decision you've got looming, all unknowns in front of you, caught up in the fog. So what do you do? How do you make decisions to shape one of the most fundamental questions we all face? Who am I? I teach thousands of people about the power of vision, the need and leadership to have a clear picture of your future. But it's a little ironic isn't it? Visions are important, yet we can't see many of the most important factors in front of us. And that's the catch. How do you come up with a vision for who you're meant to be? You look back in order to look forward. Because all along your journey to this point, you've unknowingly pointed towards something incredible. If I think about my life, it's almost impossible to see where all my work is going. I travel the world to understand work, teach university courses on leadership, co-founded an organization that helps students shape their life. Where do those points meet in the future? There's no way to know until I look back to see how all those things start. And then I see it. I help people lead their life. The vision in front of me is clear because I'm not looking that way. Behind me, I see the trials and the triumphs. 
I see the mistakes I'll never repeat and the goals that have yet to be reached. It's not about being defined by your past, but informed by it. So I get it. The future may not be clear to you right now. My suggestion? Turn around. Think about how your steps to this point can show you the way. Who am I? I was once told the true test of being a leader is being able to keep your head up even when the pressure is at its height. Because all you want to do is let it drop. To look down. Get caught up in what's grinding. Stay stuck in those things that are hard. Because there's no denying it. They're really damn hard. The weight starts feeling unbearable. Pressure's on. All you want to do is run. Pressure's on. Life is swirling. The pressure is on. And here's what you do. You keep your head up. Being maxed out, we don't like talking about it. We want the uplifting message. We want the inspiring story. I don't like talking about this. These words are coming up because I'm feeling it. I'm exposed. My armor is down. My mask is down. I know tomorrow is different, but for today, I have one goal. Keep my head up. We are the masters of our fate. That the task which has what been the set Churchill us do when the storm was raging all around him. The war was coming. Just imagine what that would have felt like. And what did he do? He kept his head up. Inspired others to do the same. What did Tiger do when everything was crumbling? He must have taken everything he had. He must have taken more than winning. He kept his head up. What does the mother do who is pulled and pulled and pulled? She keeps her head up. What does the father do who is pushed and pushed and pushed? He keeps his head up. There are moments when this hits all of us. We do all we can to avoid it. We literally do all we can to avoid it. Yet sometimes it still comes. The pressure's on. I know the feeling. I hate saying it. But I know the feeling. And the response. Though it will take everything you have. Keep your head up.